Hey folks, my name is Dave Snyder. This is part of my continuing series on how to customize the Linux desktop. Uh, today we're going to be talking about snapshots. We're going to be talking about ButterFS. We're going to be talking about Snapper. And in specific, we're going to be using Snapper to set up snapshots using ButterFS. Uh, it's a pretty complicated project. Uh, one thing that I do want to talk about is the difference between snapshots and backups. What we're setting up today is a snapshot service, which means it's going to be good for like system recovery, like you installed the wrong program or something and everything got borked. Uh, it's not going to be good for, hey, I'd like to back up my photos or something along those lines. We're not actually going to be backing up files onto a different server. What we're going to be able to do is set up like, incremental snapshots that are going to say, hey, can you take my system back before I made these horrible changes on it? So uh, without that out of the way, let's sort of jump into uh, things. This one's complicated enough. I figured it was worthwhile to set up some diagrams to show up uh, what we're actually going to get out of this before you actually commit the 30 or 40 minutes with me to get this one working. Um, so we're going to be able to set up snapshots so that when we boot into our system, if there's something that doesn't work, like for example, this Arch Linux uh, uh, boot doesn't work, we're going to be able to jump into the snapshots and be able to see snapshots that were made, um, you know, both over time automatically and ones that were made when installations were happening. Uh, and that means that we're going to be able to roll back our system and be able to log back into it. Uh, so at that point, we can then roll back more formally uh, and get our system in good working order. So uh, we're going to be using the Snapper service for that. Uh, it's a tool that is built on top of ButterFS that allows us to make a bunch of snapshots. They're going to end up being named and, and listed in here. They're going to happen uh, in this case. When we install software, so you can see we installed NeoFetch in here and it's going to keep records of when we did that stuff so that if we want to move before we installed software, uh, it'll work. <clears throat> now, to understand how snapshots work and how Snapper is going to work, uh, we're going to have to do a little bit of learning. In fact, when I watched some videos on this um, on this stuff and when i read the arch wiki it was very very uh dense on the commands that you should type but it wasn't as dense on like what 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 am i actually doing like how do these services work together uh, so this will be a little bit longer episode as we cover some of that type of stuff the first thing that we're going to do like normal is we're going to install the programs that we need so we're going to need snapper we're going to need snap pack we're going to need snapper rollback uh, and then we are going to need uh, Grub uh, Butter FS. Uh, so between these four programs, we're going to be able to get everything that we need to get those systems showing uh, like we're showing on this left side. So um, Snap Pack is going to be used anytime that Yay or Pac Man is invoked, and that will automatically create snapshots for us. Uh, snapper rollback is going to give us the ability to roll back stuff and then the grub butter fs is going to give us uh, this menu system that we need um, so let's learn a little bit about the file system that we have on this system so if you remember uh, which i'm sure everybody remembers this uh, in our first episode we installed um, we installed Arch and it asked us what type of file system we wanted to use. And our choices there were like uh, ext4 and ButterFS. And I told you all, use ButterFS because we're going to set up rollbacks later. So hopefully you went and did that side of it. Um, now, ButterFS is really good because it allows the snapshotting system. It's a copy on write system, which means when you're making these snapshots, rather than making an entire copy of the entire file system again for the snapshot, it's just going to use references uh, for anything that didn't change. So it's going to say, well, go look at the current system to see if anything's changed. And we're only going to keep the snapshot of what did actually change, uh, which makes it really fast, right? You're just essentially storing the dips. So I've uh, sudoed into my root here and I did that by typing su uh, space dash. Uh, I put my password in and I'm in my root. Now, 
In our last video, we installed fish shell, and you'll notice that when we're in here, let's do our famous test. Uh, if we do ASDF, it's actually put us back into bash. And that's because our root user is not set up uh, for fish. So we just got to invoke it if we want to use fish in this, uh, in this root user. We're going to be typing in a lot of commands that would normally require us to put sudo in front of it. So if you're getting permission denied errors, it's probably because you aren't the root user. Uh, so go ahead and do that beforehand. Another thing that we're going to do is just go and CD into our root itself, do an ls-la and look at what's in there. And what you're going to see is, okay, there's Etsy folders, there's, you know, proc folders, root folders, there's a boot folder. There's also this one called snapshots. And so you'd be like, are snapshots already running in this thing? And the reality is they're not. If we come into the snapshots directory and do an ls-la, we're going to see that it's empty. And the reason that this even exists is because when we went through the Arch install procedure and we picked ButterFS, there was also a question that said, should we set up with the normal uh, set of sub volumes that, that we expect that you want? And we said yes. And so it went and set up some sub volumes. And we can look at that by going to ButterFS uh, and we want to say uh, ButterFS list, uh, well, actually we say sub ball list and we want to list all the sub volumes that are in root. So in forward slash, and it's going to say, okay, it's set up a, there's sub volumes against home. There's one against snapshots. Uh, and there's these other ones against bar and package. Now, what is a sub volume? When we're looking at this LS LA, we're actually looking at the files uh, that are on the system. And when we're looking at sub volumes, what we're really looking at is the namespaces that uh, ButterFS is using uh, to reference the file system. So when we see at like this, it's actually referencing uh, our root. And when we see at home, it's actually referencing forward slash home. Uh, that's really important distinction. It's something when I first looked into this and I was like, what the hell is a sub volume? I couldn't really figure it out. I was too caught in the idea that it was the actual location. Uh, and it's not, it, it's the reference uh, of the location. And the reason that this exists this way is because we want to be able to uh, change what that sub volume is tied to occasionally. Like if we're running snapshots, we want to take an old snapshot and we want to reapply it to uh, the location or the sub volume and, and replace it essentially. Now we can see, uh, you know, I've kind of shown what these locations are in this diagram, but we can actually see this if we look in uh, Linux's system called uh, Etsy FS tab. And this FS tab file uh, was automatically created when we started stuff up. And think of it as this is what your hard drive is set up as, and it's uh, what locations are mounted towards it. And so you have all these files that are existing there. They live on your hard drive and they need to basically be mounted um, in the correct place and to the correct sub volumes. So when we're looking at FS tab, we're looking at the file system and ButterFS is part of that. In fact, we can see that this FS tab has a but, uh, whoa, uh, <laughs> has ButterFS uh, setups here for our uh, root sub volume, right? Which is this one with at in front of it, and that's on the root forward slash directory. We see one that's set up for snapshots. We see one that's set up for home and that's set against the sub volume of home. So it's these settings uh, in here uh, that are really important to us. When we look at it, we can see, okay, there's space cache equals V2. What that's saying is, remember when we turned compression on when we did the installs? That's basically what that setting is. And it's saying, okay, this sub volume is using um, uh, compression on it. And specifically, these sub volumes are tied to a namespace, which is that at home. And in reality, they are tied to an ID, right? And so we can see the ID when we come in here. Whoops, actually loaded my host machine there. Uh, we can come in here and do a um, sudo sub vol, uh, sub vol list. Uh, forward slash, we need B 
BTRFS in front of this one. <laughs> and then we need a space. Boy, I'm going to need to change my terminal a little bit because that uh, uh, that uh, cursor, without it blinking, we, we can't see what's behind it. So we'll get to that in another episode where we need to start cleaning stuff up at this point. Um, we can look at this subvolume list and we can see, okay, uh, here's our at home one, at package one, all these types of things. So when we talk about snapshots, uh, what we're actually talking about is we are going to use Snapper to create a configuration. So Snapper's going to need a configuration to say, what should I back up? And we're going to say, Snapper, we want you to back up home, uh, not home. We want you to back up root, which is forward slash. And then it's in that configuration file, we're going to need to tell it, okay, I know that you want me to, uh, to snapshot root. What, how many snapshots should I keep? And how often should I be making these snapshots? And we're going to use the config file for Snapper to be able to set that up. Now, Snapper comes with a couple services that are going to allow us to manage those. Specifically, Snapper Timeline and Snapper Cleanup uh, are going to be able, we're going to need to turn those on. And then just in the background, it's going to say, okay, what time is it? It's 12.17. At 1 o'clock, I want to run a new snapshot. Um, and it's going to say, okay, there's already 50 snapshots that are in there. I'm going to go and delete the oldest one. Um, beyond that, we are also going to use that uh, system Snap back, snap, not snap back, snap pack in this case uh, is a uh, program that we're going to use to automatically make snapshots whenever we use Pac-Man or Yay. So anytime we install programs, we're going to say this is an important event. Let's go and create some snapshots. And then that Grub system is going to go and create the menu system for it, right? And when we do this configuration, we're going to say go ahead and put it in this snapshots directory, which we're mounting against. Uh, and which is referenced to the at snapshots subvolume. Got it? I know it's hard. I know. Stick with me. Um, so what that means is, okay, great. It looks like all this stuff's already set up, right? Like we, if we came in here and we looked and did an ls uh, dash la, well, this is in our home directory. Uh, let's go into that root one, do an ls dash la. We're going to see it already has a snapshots folder, but we saw that it was empty, right? So unfortunately, when we set up Snapper for the first time, it's going to expect that it's setting it up uh, and it's going to tell us that uh, the one that's in here is busy and we can't use it. And, and we're going to be able to show that off pretty quickly uh, just by coming in here. Again, we're still in root. And the normal way that you would make a new uh, Snapper config is you would say, OK, uh, snapper dash C, which is naming the, the config that we want to make. And we'd say, okay, we want to call this one root. We want to give it the actual name of root. Uh, and we, we want to say create config for the home directory. And I keep saying home. I mean the root directory, right? So the forward slash one. When we go and do this, it's going to give us an error. And it's going to say creating btrfs subvolume dot snapshots failed because it is already exists. And you're going to, you know, I ran this probably the first time I was like, what, what does that mean? And it's because that dot snapshots folder already exists. And because the, uh, at CFS tab, when we looked into that file, uh, we could see that it was already mounted. The sub volume of dot snapshots was already mounted against the, um, directory of dot snapshots. Now, like we said, it's empty, it's bogus. There's nothing in there. So for us to uh, set up this config, we're going to need to destroy it and then remake it. So that's easy enough. We're going to use the umount command uh, to basically come in here and say, OK, get rid of uh, unmount snapshots, which is what we saw in um, that etcfs tab. And then we're actually going to now be OK with uh, removing the, uh, the folder. And just to kind of double show you what this means, let's do a mount dot uh, dash a, which is going to remount everything. And uh, what that is going to do is we still have our snapshots folder in here. It when we run mount dash a, it just runs whatever is in that FS tab and runs everything that was in it, which means we are mounted. So if we wanted to, for example, uh, to remove that dot snapshots folder at the moment, 
it's going to give us an error where it's going to say it's busy at the moment. And that's why we've got to come through here, uh, do this, uh, do this unmount first, then we're going to remove it. And now you'll notice that we don't have it saying that we're busy. So it's at this point that everything is, uh, uh, sort of set up enough. What we uh, now need to do is uh, run that snapper command uh, and create the config. And when it goes and creates this config and sets everything up, it is now also going to have recreated that snapshots folder. And so it's made it its own. And this is important for snapper because it needs to have access to that thing uh, because that's where it's going to put all of our snapshot files into. So we've got a config set up, but we're not making any, uh, any uh, actual snapshots at the moment. And to, to know that you're going to use the snapper uh, program and just run snapper ls. And that's going to show us any snapshots that are run there. Now, when it's set to zero and it's saying current, it means that's just what we're running at the moment. There's no snapshots that have been made. Now, before we go and make a bunch of snapshots, uh, we're going to need to do a couple things. We're going to need to actually edit the config file. So we have a snapper config that we created when we ran the snapper uh, create config command. And that lives in, if we go into... Uh, the file and edit it, we're going to go into Etsy uh, and then it's just called uh, snapper configs. And then it's going to be the name that you named that config, which in our case is root. So the configs name is root. It also happens to be set against forward slash, which is root, but we named the config. That's an important distinction to know. Like we're not saying give it access to root. We just, we named it root. Uh, and the reason is, is you could create as many configs as you wanted. You could set up a config that uh, snapshotted your home directory stuff as well. Uh, and you could have those running separately and parallel so that you had two snapshot systems running at the same time. But we're just going to concentrate on this one root at the moment. Uh, so when we come in here, uh, it's going to have a config file that it automatically set up for us, uh, which when we uh, look at this stuff, uh, is um, is going to have some settings that mostly we don't need to touch. There's a couple important ones that we should touch, which is one that's called allow groups. We're going to, we want to give uh, a group of users access to both this config and to the snapper uh, snapshots as well. We're going to assign them to the group of wheel. Now we haven't talked about wheel before, um, but we're going to kind of show it off when we go into, you know, just a new terminal, we're going to be logged into our user as, uh, as Dave. And we know that because when we hit ID, it's going to say, okay, you are UID Dave. And you can see there at the end, it's going to say group set to wheel. How did that happen? What is wheel? When we originally installed Arch and we set up our first user, there was a question there that asked like, should Dave be a super user? Now, when we said yes to that, it added Dave to the wheel group. And the wheel group's just the fancy way that's saying, hey, they have access to everything, right? It's, it's a wheel. Um, so they've got, they have pseudo access. And so when we're coming in and editing this file and saying allow groups equals wheel, we're saying, okay, Dave or any other people that are in that wheel group will have access to this. Now, the only other things that you can edit in here are the, uh, uh, that you might be interested in are this cleanup one, which has a number limit. And so that number limit is currently set to 50. So remember when I came in here and said this snapper config that's run, uh, we're asking how many should we keep? That's what this limit is for. It's saying how many total snapshots uh, should I keep before I start deleting them? And it's important to do that because uh, you want this stuff to be performant. In general, Snapper and uh, ButterFS are really, really performant with this stuff. But if you go like infinitely long, it's going to start slowing your system down. Uh, so we want to keep this uh, uh, limit probably set to the default that it's set at. The next thing is the limits for uh, the timeline cleanup. So what's actually happening here is it's saying how many of uh, it's going to go and make you know, um, uh, 
it's it's going to make snapshots every hour. It's going to make snapshots every day, every week, every month, every year. Uh, and it's going to do that based upon the configurations that we set here. So for example, uh, we're going to change this one based on the Arch Wiki recommendations to change it to only keep five hourly back, as many as five hourly backups, only keep as many seven daily backups, and then we're going to turn off monthly and yearly. And we're going to save this file. And why are we setting these values to this in specific? Daily one should be pretty obvious. Um, we're setting it to seven because we only want one file for each day. So at most, just keep us, you know, if we're logging into our computer every day, it's gonna make one backup for, uh, not one backup, one snapshot for us every day, um, you know, when the day changes. And monthly, uh, or monthly, it's not gonna make any because who needs a monthly backup if you've got hourly and weekly backups? Uh, there's no reason that you'd want to go back in time like that far. The change set would be so big potentially that it'd be worthless. Uh, so doing this, again, it's just another way to keep things performant and it's kind of sane, right? Uh, the hourly one basically means we're going to keep as many of, as five hourly backups. Now, just because uh, it's set up to run an hourly backup, doesn't mean that your system's on to perform it. So if you turn your computer off at night, the next day when you come back in, you're gonna see that the last hourly backup was run the day before, right? So keep a lot of that stuff in mind. That's what these settings do. You can tweak them however you want, but these are some pretty good ones. Um, we're gonna quit out of there. So we've got that part uh, set up. We have also gone and unmounted and set up our configs. One other thing that's important to do is uh, when we look at our subvolume, when we go back to that ButterFS subvolume list and we look at a forward slash on here, uh, we're going to see at home log package, all that type of stuff. Now, ButterFS uh, subvolume comes with a default. So if we come in here and say get default for the home directory, uh, it's going to say it's set to ID5. Now we don't see ID5 in this list, right? We see 256 up to 263 here. And the reason is, is that ID5 is like the top of the top, uh, like it's the entire file system itself. It's called FS tree. Now, when we're looking at our root sub volume that we're setting up for all these things, we actually want the default one to be set to 256. Uh, and that's because we want it to be set to the actual files that are there. The reason that we want to do this is because we want to be able to pick and choose what things that we actually replace if we actually need to do it. So what we need to do is actually set up a different uh, sub volume as the default. And that's just as easy as changing that command to saying set default. You give it the ID number of the sub volume that you want to attach it to. And then you want to give it again that location, which is going to be forward slash. So at this point, we can now come back and say get default. And rather than it being set to five, it's going to be set to 256, which is this one right here. Again, kind of trust me on this one. This is what everything sort of recommends to do there because it gives you a little bit more portability with the way that your file system is set up. So We've now got a config file. We've uh, set up these uh, default subvolume things the way that we should, uh, you know, but we're still not getting any uh, snapshots actually happening. Now, just because we set up that config does not mean that the services that are supposed to make these things are actually happening yet. And to do that, we're going to need to turn on Snapper Timeline. We're going to need to turn on Snapper Cleanup over here. And then we're going to need to uh, turn on uh, the Grub BTRFS system. And to do that, we're going to use another system within Linux, which is called SystemCTL. And SystemCTL basically is our management system that turns services on and off uh, and gets them running for us. So uh, when we uh, jump into here, it, it's pretty much the same for all of these. We're going to type SystemCTL enable. We're going to say now, and then we're going to tell it the things that we want to turn on. So for example, we want to turn on uh, that Grub BTRFS system. So I just typed Grub, and again, because we're in Fish Shell, just by hitting tab, it's going to auto-complete it for us. We now have that there. It's going to say it's created a symlink. 
Now, what does that mean? It just means that it's been added to system, uh, system D and it's now running. Because we ran it with that now parameter, it's gonna tell us that yes, in fact, it is running and we can uh, do a system CTL and we could do a status uh, to say grub uh, path and we'll see that it's saying, okay, it's loaded, it's active, it's running. You can see when it was started, which was a minute or 28 seconds ago, right? We're now gonna hit Q on there to exit out of the pager. Uh, and at this point, we've got that one running. We now just need to start the other two. So it's going to be the same uh, 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 syntax. We're gonna say enable now, and this time we're gonna type snapper and we're going to do timeline.timer. That's gonna then make that symlink for us. We're gonna do the other one that we need to enable, which is the cleanup. Now, if we did not set these two things up and turn them on, then these services would not be running. It would not be making uh, the snapshots based upon the configuration file that we made, and it wouldn't be cleaning stuff up. In fact, it'd be really bad if we didn't turn that cleanup one on, right? Because it would be making all the snapshots, but it wouldn't be cleaning them up beyond 50. So it's important to have these things running. Again, just so that we understand how this stuff works. If we come in here and say status uh, and do snapper, uh, and we go into that cleanup service, uh, we can see that this stuff is actually running at the moment, which is great. So everything's running, looking good. We're feeling sharp. Uh, at this point, uh, if it was one o'clock, the snapshot's gonna run and it's gonna build us a new one and it's gonna call it timer. Now, um, what about other snapshots? You know, we don't wanna wait till one o'clock. We wanna see how this stuff works right now, right? Uh, so there are a couple different ways that we can engage and make snapshots other than the automatic ones that get created. Uh, one is that we can come in here and say snapper-c, do root. Rather than say create config in this sense, we're just going to say create in general, which is saying go create a snapshot. And then you need to tell it uh, that you can give it a description, which as we can see in the table right above us, uh, we'll just name it. So let's make one for our first snapshot. Let's just call it base. Uh, and uh, at this point, now when we run Snapper LS, we're going to see that yes, it went ahead and created a new snapshot for us. So now we've got a, a base snapshot that was made. It's our very first one, uh, which is fantastic. Now, because we have that Grub uh, ButterFS system running, when we, you know, when we were looking at this bootloader stuff over here, we're now going to see that there's going to be an Arch Linux snapshot area, and there's going to be a list of snapshots, which are going to come from this list. Um, now, unfortunately, if we were to start and try to run this thing right now, it's actually going to bust. Um, now, our, our, our base at the moment is no different than, you know, uh, where it was at, uh, as it is now. So let's just like do an install. Let's, let's see if the automatic install stuff and automatic snapshots that are made from it are working. And remember, we got this because uh, we went and uh, when we installed, let's go back to our uh, Dave user. Uh, when we came in here, we ran this command. We installed something called snap pack and we installed snap rollback and grub butter FS. The snap pack one is the one that we're gonna see actually working right now, which is when we install any other program and let's install NeoFetch uh, onto the system. And again, we're doing this as Dave, not as root. Uh, it's going to say, okay, go ahead and install this stuff. And we're going to see two special things that are happening in there now. One is that it's saying, Performing snapper pre-snapshots for the following configurations, root two. And then it's saying performing snapper post snapshots for the following configurations, root three. So if we come in here and do a snapper LS, and we can look at the snapper LS stuff because we actually gave uh, Dave access to wheel, uh, we can see that it made two more snapshots for us, one at two and one at three. Uh, that are based on us making those installations. So we can see this one is when we installed NeoFetch, and this one is when NeoFetch was actually installed itself. 
And if we wanted to see, and just double check, if we didn't believe it, we wanted to see the files that actually changed at that time, what we could do is do a snapper um, status and we could give it two different uh, snapshots. And so we could say one to three. And so that, that one is the one that we set up as our base and the three is going to be uh, for our post. And what it's going to say is that nothing changed, uh, well, the things that changed in one to three were we installed NeoFetch. You can see it's now included in user bin NeoFetch. Uh, some cache files changed, the Pac-Man DB lock changed, uh, and some lib files changed. So basically we installed NeoFetch at this point. Um, what would we see if we did uh, snapper of one to two, which is our base against the pre-hook, right? In this case, what we're seeing is nothing changed because it ran before NeoFetch was installed. In fact, the only things that actually changed were Fish's history. And this is, you know, last episode we talked about installing Fish and how it's got this fantastic history system, right? When I start typing LS, it's gonna fill it in for me. Or I'm gonna start typing snapper and it's gonna fill it in for me. The way that it does that is it writes to a history file that's stored on local. And uh, that's happening at that root layer, uh, which is um, why we're seeing it here. We ran a bunch of commands in between us running that original snapper uh, snapshot for base and when we ran the installation of NeoFetch, right? So even just in that short period of time, we did start doing stuff with, we were typing things essentially. Um, so this gives you a basic idea of how that snapper system works um, from that perspective. Now, let's say we wanted to do a rollback, right? Um, I talked about this rollback system that we should have set up for Grub, right? And let's give it a shot and see what happens. Um, we're going to need to reboot to see into Grub. Uh, when we go and do this, it's going to load up uh, our Grub system and hooray, because we turned on that Grub ButterFS system, we're gonna see that there's an Arch Linux snapshot uh, uh, selection that we can now make. Even better, we're gonna see the snapshots uh, that it's given us that we can actually make and change against, right? Uh, so we're running, the reason why it's not showing that post one is because that's the one that we're actually running against. But if we wanted to, we could go to the one that we named base, or we could go to the one that was run pre. Now we know that these are relatively the same things. Uh, so let's go ahead and pick base to try and roll back. Uh, and if we did this correctly, we should see that NeoFetch is not actually installed, right? Um, because it's before it actually happened. Now, uh, when we make that selection, it's going to ask you for the image that you got to load. There's a fallback one, but we're always going to pick uh, the one that is not named fallback and we're going to run this and you're going to see a big old error that made me really bummed out when I first saw it, which was the root device is not configured to be mounted read write. And I was like, what? <laughs> what does this mean? I set up all this stuff and it doesn't work. Like, how do I actually get into it? And so what's happening in the background is when we're making those snapshots. So when Snapper is making all these types of snapshots, it's taking this snapshot in time and it's actually making a read only version of a snapshot, which when you think about it makes a whole lot of sense because you want your snapshots to be static in time. Like you don't want them touched. You don't want anything that's in them uh, to actually change because you want them to be reliable. They, they are a moment in time that you might need to restore against. Now, unfortunately, when we're doing it in this case, we're not actually using it to restore. We're using it to actually run our system. In the background, when we're using uh, Grub here, we're actually mounting against that snapshot and we're saying, hey, go use this one and get me into the system. Now, because it's a read only uh, snapshot, uh, Linux is basically being like, dude, I, I can't do that. This is a read file. You wouldn't be able to do anything when you got in there, right? You couldn't type anything because it, it wouldn't be able to do anything. So uh, there is a workaround for this and we're, we're going to uh, set it up in this next part. Uh, the first thing that we're going to need to do is get out of our, uh, we're going to need to shut our system back down. You know, this would be the equivalent of actually like uh, cycling it with the power button uh, so that when we come in here and, and click back into it, 
Uh, we're just going to go back to our normal old Arch Linux one, the one that has NeoFetch in it, right? This is the one that was post, right? Uh, so now when we come into here and we log in, uh, we're going to be able to verify that that's that system because we're going to come in here and do uh, a NeoFetch. And we can see, okay, this, this program has been installed and it's working. Um, now, to make that grub thing work, we need a way essentially to make those files that were loaded um, not read-only, but we need to make them writable. Uh, and specifically, we don't want to like brute force it and say all of these things are writable because that would, again, defeat the purpose of the snapshot system. Uh, there is a way that was provided by the author of this grub butter FS system. And I'm going to open up a browser uh, to go to an issue that's in here, uh, which I saved over here so that you all can see um, that really discusses this type of stuff. And it, it's exactly what happened when I ran into it, which is, hey, I, I ran this stuff and I, I ran your fancy system and it worked perfectly, except I couldn't then, you know, uh, actually load stuff up. And there's a very, very long discussion chain on here, which basically people are talking about how could they make that grub system actually log in. And they came up with two solutions. One is that they could add a hook onto uh, the startup. When, when Linux actually starts up and that grub system actually starts up, everything loads up in RAM. And what they could do is they could add a hook that makes a copy of the snapshot and makes one that has write access to it. And that would allow you uh, to then uh, boot into that system because it's writable. The other system uh, that they set up, which is probably the more formal way to do it, is there's a fancy thing called an overlay file system. And what that basically says is you, you set one uh, files, uh, one of these snapshots on top of the other one, uh, and you're using this one in that way. Now, unfortunately, that makes it a little bit harder. It will allow you to get into the system, but it's still going to be in a read-only fashion, which means any changes that you're going to make into the system are going to disappear. That's not as user-friendly to me. If you really, really understand Linux, and maybe you're not watching this video if you know stuff that well, um, you would then have to like manually mount a couple of these things, go into that ButterFS system, make sure that you mount things correctly. I don't want to do that. I just, if something catastrophic happens to my machine, I just want to hit like, go to that one when I'm in Grub and I want it to just work. So I'm going to use the first solution that they came up with. Uh, and to do that, we are going to need to, uh, to make a couple files uh, and I'll kind of walk through them. So the first file that we're going to need to make is we're going to um, we're going to make a file in here in Etsy init copy IO hooks uh, switch snap uh, switch snap rotor W which means switch the snap rotor the rotor is again the wheel right that's there uh, change the permissions to write change it to W. Uh, and so we're adding a hook. You don't need to know too much about this other than uh, the this init uh, copy IO system is how things get loaded into RAM initially, real, real early when we're loading stuff up. And so we're, it uh, does allow you to have a hook system, which means that we can actually script it a little bit. And I didn't write these scripts. Uh, I just found them extremely useful. Uh, and you're going to see that it's going to work for us. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set the file type to uh, SH, uh, which is going to give us some color coding. And I'm going to set the tab stop to two so that we can actually see what's in here. Um, and this is just a simple bash file. Uh, I wish I could say that it's simple and that I fully understood everything that was going on in it and the systems that it's uh, targeting. But this is Linux. You take sometimes uh, some scripts that you find on the internet, you put them into your system and you're like, hey, that worked for me, right? Um, <laughs> it's terrible advice. Don't do it. Uh, but hey, you're learning. So, you know, learn with me. Uh, so what we're basically doing is saying if that there is a, uh, uh, a snapshot in here that is uh, read only and uh, it's uh, 
uh, only in read-only mode, which is what's happening right here, uh, then what we want to do is actually make a new uh, version of that snapshot, right? And we want to set it to uh, write. So that's what the RW at the end of this uh, is doing. Uh, and then it's going to mount and unmount these things in a correct order. So when it starts up, it's going to look, is this file uh, uh, read only? If so, make a temp one, use that one instead. Okay, so that's what's happening at the hook level. We're going to right quit this file. We now need uh, to edit two more files. One of them we're going to make ourselves uh, just like before. This one is going to be kind of in the same directory rather than in the hook, it's going to be in the install area. Uh, so when everything gets installed, same thing, switch, snap, rotor, w. You can change the name of these files. It doesn't matter too much. What matters is that you keep everything the same name. So if you do change the name, make sure to keep the name. Uh, and then we're going to come in here and we're going to put a much simpler script uh, in here, which is just loading the ButterFS system uh, within it. So you can see the add module uh, running the scripts and stuff like that. And it's saying, okay, it's making a copy of the snapshot in read-only mode before boot. Fantastic. Uh, now that we've got these two files in here, uh, we now need to actually uh, uh, do a make, init, copy IO, and do P. So because we changed those settings, we now need to run that, uh, we need to rebuild everything with that P flag on it. It's gonna come through and say, uh, what did we do wrong here? Uh, we do, oh, it's saying, Dave, please, uh, you can't write to this, you don't have access. So make sure to do that uh, with sudo access and it should now go ahead and run that. Now, what this means is that when we now go and do a reboot, and if it gets in one of those stuck modes where it's like, this is a read file, it's going to copy it, make a write file, and then load into it. Now, unfortunately for us, when we look back at our snapper uh, uh, systems, uh, our, our snapper snapshots that we made, this system is not going to work uh, for snapshots that we made before we edited those three files. So it, it won't know to do this. It will only know to do that for uh, these brand new snapper files that are uh, snapper snapshots that are being made. So I don't know a good way to show that off uh, other than making some new snapshots. So I'm just going to uh, create uh, a couple of them here. Let's, since we're in our, our user uh, thing here, let's go ahead and just manually, remember we still have NeoFetch in here, right? Let's just manually remove it. Uh, and so we can do a, a, an RNS, which will remove uh, the dependencies that would be in there as well. Uh, and when we remove this, it's gonna say, okay, yes. Uh, and you can see that it's made a four and a five for our snapper stuff. When we come in here uh, and look at this stuff, we can see, okay, it made a four in here and it made uh, a five in here as well. If we just move this a little bit over, it's gonna, oh, we're so close. Uh, come on, come on, baby. There we go. Uh, it's now made a four and a five for us. So it, we added NeoFetch, uh, then we removed it again. And so that post uh, is happening there at that point. Uh, so now when we run in our system, we shouldn't actually see NeoFetch running. Uh, and again, just to show off these types of things, if we went and did a uh, snapper status and did it, uh, between four and um, dot dot five, uh, we'll see that uh, in this case, this uh, negative, this minus symbol means that uh, NeoFetch was removed in here. So from user bin, uh, we no longer have a NeoFetch uh, that's in there. So uh, we've got a couple more snapshots that we've now made uh, you know, just kind of automatically through this system that have been made post us editing those hook files, right? So these ones should be fairly uh, safe to use. Now, let's just remind ourselves what's happening. We're in a system that doesn't have NeoFetch in it. And, and we're in that, uh, we're essentially, uh, we're 
in the state of this 5.1 that's happening uh, or very close to it. So now when we do a reboot, the system's going to ask us uh, the same sort of questions. We can say, okay, I want these Arch Linux snapshots. It's now going to have more for us, right? Uh, so we can see, okay, where do you want to go to? And in this case, uh, we know that these uh, three here will not work because uh, they um, you know, happened at that, at that time before we added those files. But this pre one um, should work. And so what this pre one, remember what we did was we actually removed NeoFetch uh, from the system. So in our live system, uh, NeoFetch is no longer there. If we apply this pre one, uh, then we should be into a system that has NeoFetch with it. So let's go ahead and uh, load that up. We're going to pick the one, not the fallback one, and we're going to load it. We're going to see that same error, but then it's going to reload itself. It's going to reload itself. Did we do this correctly? It's going to reload itself. Let's double check what we did. Probably did something wrong. Uh, let's force our shutdown on here. Let's reload it up. Uh, did we pick the wrong one? Let's double check. Let's make everything. Let's go into our uh, uh, Arch Linux one. We'll just double check this type of stuff. Come into our system, hit test. We're in a system that no longer has NeoFetch, right? Because it was removed. Uh, we have a snapper LS in here. Uh, we have uh, a pre and a post. One was run uh, with that pre and that post uh, happening. Let's double check and let's just make a new one as well uh, so that we can name these things correctly. So let's run a snapper uh, uh, C loading the config of root and we're going to run a create um, with a description of uh, after NeoFetch was removed. Uh, and that should be running correctly. Uh, and so now <laughs> we're going to do a snapper ls and we're going to see, okay, after NeoFetch was removed in there, that one was run by the Dave user, right? Uh, and uh, we can, let's say that we want to add it back. So let's add NeoFetch back to our system. Uh, we now have NeoFetch and we have a pre and a post that were made, right? So this is number seven, number eight. Uh, let's double check uh, that we edited the correct files. Uh, so we're going to do a sudo NeoVim uh, and check these rotor files. Uh, we have one for install. We named it correctly. Uh, oh, I, I know what we forgot to do. There's one more thing that we actually need to touch here, which is we need to go into, um, we did rebuild everything, uh, but there is actually one file beyond. So just to reiterate what we did, uh, we added the install one. Uh, we also added one here at, uh, that was a hook, right? Uh, init uh, CPIO, and we made one that was called hook, right? And that was this file that actually does the stuff. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, the way that the system works is you need to edit one more file, and that is uh, you need to edit edit init CPIO, uh, and in this case, it's not going to be, uh, sorry, we need Etsy uh, make init CPIO. And remember when we ran that make init copy CO uh, uh, command, what we forgot to do was we forgot to actually add the hook to it. And so when we come to this Etsy make init copy IO, you can see that this last one here has a hooks uh, setting that's on it. And we are now, we just need to add the hook that we named, which was called switch snap rotor W. And when we write this file, we're now going to need to rerun it. So this was the part that we missed. I notice uh, here, Notice that you're not able to see these commands because of my big old head there. So again, we looked at that switch, uh, snap rotor. We looked at this one. We then edited a file called Etsy make init CPIO.conf, right? And let's, let's double check what we did in there. 
uh, we edited the hook and we added that hook on top of it using the name of what we named the scripts, which are right here, switch, snap, rotor, uh, w. And so now what we need to do is run that make init copy IO. And it's notice this error. And that's because we have a uh, typo in it. So let's go do it again. It's a good way to show stuff off. Uh, this is the reality when you're editing files. Always, whenever you're seeing an error, it's almost always because of something like this. So snap row uh, here. Let's just do this correctly. Switch snap rotor uh, w, right? That's the name of our file. We're going to close the parentheses on it. We're going to double check that uh, we've done things correctly and we're going to hit right quit on it. Now, when we make it, uh, it's going to know that that file's there, which is great. We're not getting any errors and now it's running. So, uh, <laughs> always going to be something, right? Uh, so now when we go and do a reboot on here, let's go for it. Uh, we're going to see that same system in here. Uh, and we go and look at these uh, snapshots. We're going to see a whole bunch of them. Uh, let's go to the one that says, uh, uh, let's go back to base, right? Uh, well, we don't want to go back to base. Remember these three that we made originally were made before we edited these files. The same thing is going to happen on these. Uh, so at this point, uh, we, it'll be curious if this will still work. Let's give it a shot. Uh, so let's go to number six. So remember that number, uh, and let's pick it. And let's see what loads up uh, because that file got changed. There we go. Now it's working. Uh, so now that we've run that, that script on there, everything should work. Uh, let's remember uh, one bad side to the way that our virtual environment is working is we can't exactly, I couldn't read the description of what number six was doing. So it, uh, number six here was after NeoFetch was removed. Uh, so you can see there's no NeoFetch in this system. So we're able to now restore uh, and jump into a system. So we've jumped into one. Now, let me show off one more thing here while I've got you. It's kind of the last one. I know you think everything's done uh, and it is mostly, I just want to show the way that the, these, uh, uh, these boots work. So we logged into number six, uh, which is this one after NeoFetch was removed. Uh, there is um, this, uh, pre and post here, which is when NeoFetch was actually reinstalled back on number eight. So if we reboot our system and rather than picking the snapshot, if we pick the Arch Linux one here, what you're going to see is it's going to load number eight, right? And in this case, uh, that one should be when NeoFetch was actually available. So what we actually need is, yes, it's all fine to be able to get into it through Grub, uh, but what we need to be able to do is we need to actually be able to permanently roll back our system so that when it just loads in that default state, that it's gonna go to one of those. Uh, and to do that, uh, we're going to use one of the other tools that we installed in here, uh, which uh, if we do a snapper LS, we can see all these that are here. Let's say that we wanna go back uh, to number six, which was the manual one that we made, which was called after NeoFetch was removed, we need to use the snapper rollback tool. And right before we do that, I'm going to do one thing because I noticed that uh, we're at the hour here. It's two o'clock. If we do a snapper LS, look at that. Look at that last one that's on there. So uh, one that was run was our automatic timeline one. So because it's on the hour, an automatic snapshot was made for us. This is our newest one, which is number nine, right? So not only are those snap uh, pack ones working, our automatic timeline one is now working, uh, and that'll happen every hour, every day, as we set it within that config file. But let's get back to uh, snapper rollback, which was 
Again, when we come in here and look at the, the things that we installed, uh, we installed Snapper Pack, Snap Rollback as well. We're now going to use that uh, Snap Rollback uh, system to be able to permanently go back to one of those. So for example, if we want to go back to um, uh, number six, which was when after NeoFetch was removed, we would just say snapper rollback six. That's going to give us, it's going to say confirm, but it's going to give us an error. And it's going to give us an error because it's going to say, hey Dave, you don't have permission to do this, right? So we need to run the same command with sudo. Um, so we're going to put in our password. We're going to double uh, confirm and say confirm on this one. And you're going to notice that it's still going to fail. And you're like, dude, why is everything keep failing on us, right? And so the reason is that we actually need to configure Snapper rollback as well. And that's uh, uh, as easy as editing a config file that the Snapper rollback tool itself has, which if we come into, um, that one lives in sudo, let's do a NeoVim, Etsy, and if we do Snapper and try to complete it, uh, you're going to see that there's one called snapper-rollback.conf. If we come into this file, uh, we're going to see a um, uh, what looks like a TOML file uh, in here uh, that has um, uh, the settings that we need for this tool. So in specific, it's got a config setting that is set up as uh, root. That's good. That's config name that we named it. We named it root. It's got a sub volume that is at at. That is our main root sub volume that we have. It has a sub volume snapshots equals at snapshots. That one is a little bit off. If we come in here, we can see that by doing a sudo butterfs sub vol list uh, forward slash. And this is going to show us all of our uh, sub volumes that are in there. Notice that it's got the snapshots in here now. But remember that snapshots are not in at snapshots as they're shown here. They're actually in at dot snapshots. Uh, so that's one big thing that we're going to need to change there. The, now, the mount point is set to btrfs root, which is going to be correct. And then there's a last setting that we need to do here, which is we need to tell it uh, where our, uh, our um, hard drive is actually at. And if you can remember to the beginning of this video, uh, we went and looked at something called Etsy FS tab. And if we go look in there and look at what our root is set to, which we can see with this forward slash there, it's set to VDA2. Now yours, again, it's going to be different. Mine's on a virtual drive. Uh, so that's what's going to be set up. So we're going to say VDA2 on this one. We're then going to write quit it. Let's get out of here. Let's try that command that we ran before again. We're going to do a snapper rollback that's going to number six, which is after NeoFetch was removed. Just as a reminder, we have NeoFetch on this system. So if the rollback works, we will not have NeoFetch on the system when we come back to it. So let's go run that rollback to number six. It's gonna say, do you wanna do this? Are you sure? Let's confirm it. And it's gonna say, okay, we rolled back to number six, reboot it to finish. Now we're gonna come in and do a reboot. And now when we pick just the default Arch Linux one, um, because we, we ran that rollback on it, that is what is going to be set uh, as our, as our, uh, as our permanent one. And so it, it rolled our system back uh, there. So again, snapper ls, it pulled us back to number six. Uh, it doesn't mean that those, those old ones disappeared. If we wanted to, we could roll back into the future uh, and we'd be perfectly fine as well. So that is a pretty good description of how to set this type of stuff up. It is by far the hardest thing that you're probably going to need to do on Linux. Again, this is something that I think is important because you are going to occasionally kill your systems and we want ways to be able to get to this stuff pretty easily. I'm going to simulate a really, really, really bad one right now so that you can understand why this thing's going to save your butt when it comes up. 
So we're in here, we've rolled back. We're now going to uh, do the unthinkable and we're going to remove our Etsy directory. At this point, if we do something like this, which we've now done, we cannot get into Etsy. Our system's running perfectly fine now, but when we reboot, it's gonna die on us. And this uh, is the quickest way that I can think, probably just to kill everything. Um, but, um, you know, this may have happened for other reasons. So let's go and, and reload that Arch Linux system. Let's come into it. Let's, you know, jump in here. And it's going to be, <laughs> welcome to your new installation of Arch Linux. If you ever see something like this, it's because something's really, really bad at your mount uh, area stuff, or you've got, uh, you know, there, there's something wrong at the system level. And so we need, we would need to manually cycle uh, at this point. Uh, so let's turn our system off. Let's force the shutdown on it. Uh, let's then reload it. Uh, and now we feel pretty good. Uh, because we can come into these snapshots. Let's go back uh, and just to kind of show uh, what was happening. Remember when I told you that that script that we added would add a temporary uh, write version of the file? Uh, that's exactly what uh, happened here that time that we clicked it within Grub. So it's not going to do it every time. It's only going to do it when you click these things. I'm going to get back to... Uh, the one that we know that was pretty good, which we're gonna say is after uh, uh, NeoFetch was removed, right? Uh, or we could go to that timeline one. Let's go to this one, uh, which was that snapshot six. Um, and we are going to pick the one that is not the fallback. Again, this is gonna bring us in. It's gonna make a writable version of it. We're then going to come in, come to our test. Come in here, uh, look at our uh, snapper stuff that's set up. So we set it to six, which is when after NeoFetch was removed. Let's just double check that that's the case. Cool, super cool. Uh, and then so our last part at this point would be again to, um, we wanna do a snapper rollback and permanently go here. And so doing this, uh, once we do this and hit confirm, uh, it's going to tell us uh, ButterFS can't find in Etsy uh, STAB. Uh, hold on, sudo snapper rollback. sudo Etsy FS tab. Whoops. Uh, errors, uh, remount on here, uh, remount RO. So you can see uh, what was going on here. We have our VDA1 here as well. Let's just double check everything's set up correctly. Mount.A, we're good there at that point. Uh, let's now run our rollback, confirm. User bin snapbot OS unable to unable to mount FS root. Uh, oh, shoot! This one is because uh, when we came back to this number six one, uh, this is this is our level of confusion that we've gotten ourselves to. Uh, this was before we had actually edited the config file itself. Um, so we need to come in here into our snapper. Snapper rollback.conf file. Uh, and you're going to see again, see this stuff is not set up correctly. So we need snap uh, dot snapshots set up here and dev. So you're probably not gonna be editing files all this often, right? Like I am. Uh, but the reason I keep the camera going on this type of stuff is this is the life, man. This is like kind of the setup and stuff that you got to deal with is, hey, if you're testing out a bunch of things, you're going to be changing files, you're rolling back to them. You got to keep in your mind, like what did you actually change in there? Uh, so we should be okay now from this point. Uh, it's not going to let us do this because we forgot to do this with sudo. Uh, so let's get out of here and redo that work with sudo. Uh, we want to do the sub volume of dot snapshots 
uh, we want to set our dev to uh, VDA2. Uh, come in and let's go run our snapper rollback. Confirm. Phew, we did it, right? Uh, so now when we reboot, uh, we are going to number six, which is the one after NeoFetch was removed. We're going to reboot in here and it's going to load us back into the system, which now when we run just that base one, that base one is now going to be set to number six because we use that snapper rollback tool. Um, so in here, test. This is exactly why you set up these systems because who knows what you're going to accidentally do or what you're going to accidentally forget. And having this is just some manner of peace of mind uh, that you're going to be able to do this stuff. Um, hopefully this is fun. I know this was a super duper long video. I'm not going to make ones that are going to be an hour long. This is by far going to be probably the most difficult thing that we're going to do for our system. But we're, we're doing it early so that we're able to be able to recover from things. And that's, that's super important if you're going to use this as a work desktop. The only other things that I could think of that might be this complicated would be when we start getting into really, really deep theming. And that's just probably going to come down to some design level stuff. So hopefully you had fun with me. Hopefully you had fun being lost in my head and my brain uh, a little bit as we were trying to map them to computer brains as well. Um, I'll see you all.